You're listening to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. Danny and Jason had many discussions and debates on the back porch while making pivotal investment moves with assets. That's right, with trading cards. They welcome you to the back porch and right into those discussions about current sports news with a fresh and unique twist. So come on and join us. Welcome to the Mad Force Top Podcast. I'm your coach, Jason. Coach Danny. Fans, we got a full show for you today. A little bit different. Yes, a little bit different. We have first Formula One. We're going to a little bit about baseball. And interesting enough, is there a new track league forming? So first, Danny, right into Formula One. And where in the British Grand Prix, Sir Lewis Hamilton wins. And he wins for the ninth time at that track, which is the most ever in Formula One history uh, for one track. Uh, and this extends Sir Lewis Hamilton's record, record of 104th career victory. His first victory since... December of 2021, so about, I think, 945 or so days. 2021, he won at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Uh, and, man, just full of emotion. This was a very good race. It, it was a race full of drama. You had a little rain. You had mm -hmm. some indecision about uh, what tires are put on, on which – uh, you put the right tires on at the right time. You bolted in front, and that's exactly what Sir Lewis Hamilton did, man. And you could just tell his response uh, upon winning uh, the radio announcement. He was choked up. He was choked up even more. Uh, getting out the car, obviously hugging um, his crew, but then also, more importantly, hugging his parents. Uh, tears flowing. Uh, it was a long time, man, for someone who frequently has won as much as he has, and not to win for 945 days, whew, it's hard to win in Formula One. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was he's a seven-time world champion, and ultimately to get to this point uh, is fantastic, man. Max Verstappen coming in second, beating out uh, Lando Norris, uh, fellow countryman of, of Sir Lewis Hamilton. George Russell, who started that pole, is, <laughs> man, he drops out the race, Danny, uh, due to issues with the, with the car itself. So, and this poses to be a, a huge victory because not only is it this, you know, a victory for him, it's a victory for another victory for Mercedes. Back to back victories for Mercedes. We're halfway through the season, 12 more races to go. And you have Sir Lewis Hamilton only now one point behind George Russell in the overall standings. Uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton at number eight. Um, and he's within reach, if you will, to get to the five position. Um, so there's still a lot of racing left uh, in this season. Uh, what say you, Danny, about this Formula One race? The pitting and the strategy were key mm -hmm. uh, because Norris actually overtook Hamilton. And then there was some strategy there where Hamilton did what he did from this pitting perspective. And Norris did some things where the announcers were, thought it was a little questionable with the way he was pitting and the tires, like you mentioned. So then Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton took it, full advantage of it at the end and uh, won the race because Verstappen that came back, Norris was right there and they, he overtook Hamilton and it was it was a great race. And like you said, the elements, because a couple guys were, they get on that outside, you know, and try, they slide a little bit. And then they sometimes they took advantage when guys would slide, they would come inside and, so from a racing perspective, man, it was a great race. And it was just, like you said, it was great to see Sir Lewis Hamilton win. We're getting a little different F1 now 
from the beginning of the season where Max Verstappen was destroying everybody, right? So now we're getting some new winners. Mm-hmm. Norris has been hanging around ever Man. since. Ever since he won that first that race, he's always in the play. Always in play. Mm-hmm. And he's he's driving really well, man. Like I I thought he had this race, honest. Until the yeah, yeah. Because Sir Lewis Hamilton was fighting him off, and and like I said, with the pitting strategy that mm-hmm. cost Norris in the end. But like like you said, man, it's great to see Sir Lewis Hamilton win, and hopefully he can build on this now. Um, not sure exactly yeah. with Russell's car. I want to see what, how that goes into the next race and how that impacts. Mercedes as a whole. Um, but yeah, man, great race and great to see Sir Lewis Hamilton finally pull one out. What we're starting to see is teams catching up to Red Bull. Mm-hmm. Um I, I think folks, the cars now are a little bit more advanced. Uh, and not only that, I really believe there's gonna be more competition. Moving forward, I think McLaren is right there. Yes. there quite honestly, McLaren's been. They, I thought one of them were going to get this race the way they were yeah. driving, man, because they started coming back and they put themselves in great position. They just fell apart at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think McLaren's right there. Mm-hmm. Mercedes is starting to. They they have some upgrades. They're starting to you know really come around. So. This is going to be really interesting, these final 12. Right now, you have Red Bull fully out in the front uh, in the Constructors' Cup uh, at 373 points, Ferrari at 302. McLaren is right there at 295, and Mercedes is at 221. Mm -hmm. So those four teams are going to be battling out. Um, Listen, man, with Sergio Perez hasn't performed over the past few races for Red Bull, that's going to really open the door up the rest of the season. I'm really interested to see what happens there. Uh, And Sergio actually just recently signed a contract extension with Red Bull. So I'm I'm interested to see how he's going to shake off uh, some of the uh, most recent past performances. Uh, Ferrari is Ferrari. Uh, sometimes their pitch strategy and tire strategy is just not on point. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, that's something that I would be watching out for come next season when Sir Lewis Hamilton goes into for, with Ferrari. And McLaren, uh, McLaren's on McLaren. I, I think they, they found their rhythm. Uh, it's just, the hope is that at the end of the season, it's not going to be like McLaren could have been this. The other thing uh, of interest for this British Grand Prix, Danny, is the fact this was a storytelling, fairy tale type situation for Sir Lewis Hamilton. The last race with Mercedes at his home track. Come on, man. Yeah. That was story. That's a fairy tale. Uh, so, what a way to, you know, wrap up uh, the British Grand Prix uh, other than a victory uh, the last time with Mercedes. And now getting on to Major League Baseball, where we have the likes of the Brewers. Uh, um, they still doing the thing, man. Although they lost against the the Dodgers here, uh, I was telling you, man. I, I watched the game. Um, I started to watch the game. Brewers were up. And next thing you know, I saw the Dodgers hit a home run, and I turned it off. I was like, man, I know where this is going. Let me see more time. <laughs> I know exactly where this is going. Mm-hmm. And Lord was I right. The Brewers are still, they're still leading the division um, by now only four and a half games against those Mangy St. Louis Cardinals. And you know how they like to go ahead and have a winning streak in the middle of the season. Yeah. So Brewers, watch out. They're five and five over the last ten games. Um, but they're going to have to really, really uh, take note of the St. Louis Cardinals just to remain ahead. What say you, Danny, about the Milwaukee Brewers? Jason, this, I was glad they got the game on Sunday, but those first two games, Friday and Saturday, the bullpen let them down. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, because on, on Friday night, like you said, back in the day, we were talking about this pre-show, but 
back in the day, Will Smith, he already has two home runs. Don't give up a third. Come on, he, man. Come on, <laughs> you got to brush him off the man. plate. You got to make him uncomfortable, man. He was way too comfortable up there. Yeah, way too comfortable, man. And, they, and he made them pay. He had three home runs on uh, Friday night. <laughs> and then Saturday night, it was 3-2. Yelich hits a home run. And then the bullpen gives up two home runs. So they ended up losing. And then Sunday, they actually pulled it out, where they actually uh, put up nine and won nine to two. So – they at least got one, and it shows they can play with the Dodgers. And we know the Dodgers' lineup is lethal, and that may be an understatement. Uh, so for them to hang around like they did, I thought was good. And then, two, it is All-Star break coming up next week. Mm-hmm. We all know about the Cardinals. And they've started this little push fat earlier than usual because they were playing mm-hmm. – and now <laughs> they're six games over 500, four and a half games back, like you mentioned. And this is where they usually make that push right after All Star. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Brewers, they play the Pirates now. They start a series tonight. And they got to get at least two or three in this series. And then I think they play Washington before the break. Yeah. They went four or mm-hmm. six, going to the break. It's got to hang on now, man, because the, uh, the Cardinals going to be nipping at your heels. Mm-hmm. All in all, man, the, the bullpen doesn't let you down. I think you you get two out of three, at least two out of three this past weekend. That'd been even better. But I thought they held their own. It was just some unfortunate luck on Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now, then you're on to uh, an interesting uh, new league that is being formed by none other than. Four-time Olympic gold medalist Michael Johnson. I saw this article initially on social media. Uh, did some digging, and man, this is something great. Um, I'm just gonna read a little bit from an ESPN article. Uh, I just want to source it correctly. ESPN uh, has this article, uh, and it says, "Spreading great, Michael Johnson is launching a track league that looks to assemble." nearly 100 of the sport's top performers four times a year to compete for $12.6 million in prize money over its first season. The league Grand Slam Track announced um, Tuesday, and this is an article um, that was initially put out June 18th, um, announced that it will launch next April with plans for one event in Los Angeles, the home of the 2028 Olympics, one in another American city, and two more overseas. Um, the league has uh, announced his first signing world record hurdler, uh, Sidney McLaughlin, LeBron, uh, lending star power to the new operation almost a year before it opens. I saw another article that uh, goes a little bit more into detail that I want to highlight, Danny. And this is an article from uh, the Sports Business Journal. Uh, of course, it says Olympic champion Michael Johnson has secured more than $30 million from investors and strategic partners for track league. Um, Winners Alliance, the for profit arm of the Professional Tennis Players Association was the lead investor and will be the league's operating partner. Uh, it goes on to say about the announcement that was back in February, but I wanted, I wanted to indicate this part here. It says, to that end, Johnson's league has added three agencies to, rep- to promote the sports stars uh, through fan-focused storytelling. The league has hired uh, Doubleday and Cartwright, a creative studio that specializes in sports, music, art and culture. The agency has worked with brands, including Apple, Nike, and Red Bull, as well as um, Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, and NBA teams. Uh, it will work with Johnson's League uh, to create its graphic identity and later work with athletes to create their individual graphic identities. Um, one last thing I want to add here, Danny, uh, says here, uh, Johnson's League uh, also signed two circles 
and SRK Strategies, a data-driven sports marketing agency. Uh, two circles work with the NFL, Premier, Premier League, and Formula One, among other leagues and, and teams, helping them moder modernize their products with fan data. So I'll stop there. But Danny, this is fantastic news for track and field. The amount of money that's going to be coming in is going to be fantastic. Uh, this is something that I believe will help uh, track and field in the U.S. You got to realize track and field overseas is where the money is at. Uh, mm -hmm. You have the Diamond League, you have all these different leagues um, and where athletes really go and perform. Michael Johnson being the person, the athlete that he is, the track star that he is, and now uh, understands the business side of things. Man, this is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I absolutely love this move. The question is, oh, and the other thing about this league is they're going to focus in on more on the one-on-one -on -one competition. So no longer will the, the rivals face, face other people mm -hmm. and wait until the finals to possibly get there. This league is going to focus in on head-to-head. -head. Now, <laughs> I remember when Michael Johnson and who was it? Was it was it Donovan Bailey? It was somebody. <laughs> and they were supposed to run the 150 back in the day. And Michael Johnson messed up his hamstring. It was against a Canadian runner. And I remember that. And I was like, man, I was hoping. But I think he learned from that and learned, man, we can turn this into not only what they have over in Europe in the Diamond League, but have something similar to that fan favorite because they put up some money for that one-on-one -on -one competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is phenomenal. I cannot wait until this league forms. And with the way that Netflix has been doing these series, so Formula One has been great on Netflix. That series has been great. Uh, I just watched Sprint mm -hmm. on Netflix. If you haven't watched that, I highly recommend. I can just only imagine how this league is going to really take shape with all the data, um, just like how, like how the data forms on the screens for Formula One. I can see that for track athletes now mm -hmm. in this league. So I'm pumped. I'm excited for this. Michael Johnson, I'm a fan. I uh, was a fan of, you, of yours uh, with the gold shoes and the 96 Olympics uh, and everything. Even before then, I used to run the 400. Um, you know, so, yeah, definitely a fan. But let me just say, this really puts money in the pockets of the athletes, mm -hmm. especially here in America. Uh, I know it's going to be two races here in America and eventually two overseas, but, man, this is great. What say you, Danny, about... Uh, this new league that's forming. Uh, Jason, man, I was excited uh, when you shared this with me. That because I'm a big track guy, man. That's what I look forward to. And you really don't get the essence of it until like the Olympics, right? And otherwise, you got to find it on some random channel, like if uh, college is having their whatever or whatever the case may be. So to see those races, but then to show those stars and to get Sidney McLaughlin right off the rip as like your premier person who just set a world record a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's great, man. And that's what the focus is in his focus. When I read the article was he's trying to bring this to light in the United States from the professional standpoint. So it's big from a high school and college, but once they make the pros, that's where you kind of lose sight. Until they're mm -hmm. living. So mm -hmm. he's bringing that and he has the funding behind it. So it's not going to be based on what I'm reading. It's not going to be some janky little setup. It's gonna actually going to be something to watch, a presentation mm -hmm. of sorts. So I just look forward to it, man. And to bring that because also there's only an exclusive group of athletes. I think it's 48 athletes they're signing. So then, too, just to get, kind of get it off the ground and do, do you expand? And then this may trickle down then down to like the college and high school levels to build it even more. 
because track, like I said, track has been big since we've been, you know, around. It's, it's mm -hmm. one of the original Olympic events, but it kind of falls to the wayside until the Olympics are around. Mm -hmm. So now this actually, and that's why I'm curious to see how this goes because like the matchups and how it's presented because that'll be obviously huge for it to, you know, get some legs, no pun intended, <laughs> and um, get some traction and move forward. So great idea. Great. He had funding. And like you said, he's someone who's people know too. Everyone knows Michael Johnson, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. glorified Olympic athlete. Uh, so I'm, I'm pushing for it, man. And I hope they're, they're successful because this is something I'll definitely tune into. I'll definitely tune into, and this is really modeled after uh, tennis. So with the Grand Slam championships and everything, you have a pot of money, what have you. This is going to be uh, similar to that. So yeah, this is this is very uh, a very unique idea, something um, that the sport needed, quite frankly, uh, to create these rivalries, if you will, and watch them go head to head. So yeah, this is. This is spot on, Michael Johnson. Yeah, and with that too, being overseas, he may pull in more revenue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for the league because if it gets, you know, as big as it could get, like you said, overseas is where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. So who, who's not to say that they won't push more money into it to make it even bigger? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, no, awesome idea, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for joining us at That Ports Talk Podcast. You can also join us on Twitter by tweeting us at back underscore podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, which is backportstalkpodcast.com. You can also email us at backportstalkpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember that there's enough hate in the world. So go ahead and spread a little love.